I'm closer now to mum than I ever was, and I can't believe how capable and strong I've become. I'm proud that I have found the strength to make a difference in her life. Although I'm gaining a real sense of achievement in, in caring for her, I've come to realise the importance of balancing her care and also living my own life. For example, sometimes after a day with mum, I come home and I'm, I'm mentally and physically exhausted. I have to remind myself that I have my own family and that I can't afford to put my life on hold and allow my personal life to suffer. The best medicine is the family carer. Family care is a crucial for the quality of life for the person with dementia. In other words, if a carer looks after himself or herself better, they'll be able to provide better care for the person with dementia. It's not selfish, it's good sense. To go through the, the stress that I went through with my mum, it, it's unbelievable because I also was going through a bit of depression of my own at the time. Uh, and the way that I found of dealing with that was I started doing art and I've, I've, I've never been an artist in my life, but I started doing art and I found that that relieved a lot of stress and, and a lot of pressure off me. And then um, it got to the stage where um, my mum was actually enjoying me doing art. So she would come and sit and watch me do art, and, you know, these landscape paintings, and, and she really enjoyed it. So that was my way of dealing with, with the stress and in the, in the depression that I was going through at the time because I, I honestly didn't know what to do at the time because it was just so stressful. If I'm happy, it means I've got a happy husband. If, if I can manage my life, I can manage him. The other thing, I make sure I have plenty of sleep at night. And if I'm well and happy, that transfers onto him. If I put out that I'm positive to Gordon, I feel that um, empowers him as well. And if he knows I'm in control of my life and his life and our life together, he trusts me enough to know that that's what we do. I'm fortunate I've got a fitness centre across the road. So I try to get there at least three times a week. I could go every day, but I go three times a week. Um, I maintain um, all my contacts with my friends. Um, and um, I make sure that I go to lunch with them. Uh, what else do I do? I really maintain a, a, a life that I feel that I would continue to do even if Gordon didn't have dementia. Uh, I saw a psychiatrist for a period of time, which was brilliant because I just talked about myself for an hour and just let it all out. With the uh, Alzheimer's counselling, it's brilliant because you can just have a really bad day and ring up and just talk and, and they do understand. And Nobody else understands. You know, I can talk to my friends and they say, oh, we'll come around and see you and, you know, don't you worry, we'll you know, talk to us. They don't understand. No one else, who, unless you're in, experiencing this, you don't understand. I also have found that no two people with the disease are the same. I don't, I don't really know, but I've noticed in me a couple of times pulling back from social things that I just at the last minute said, look, I just don't feel like going, so I'd ring up and cancel it. But now I get, I, I'm aware of the problem I'm, I am pushing through, so um, I'm making a bigger attempt to go to Rotary meetings, um, trying to do a better job, job of scheduling things into my calendar to make sure that we don't miss it because something else crops up. Well, I had a bad back recently and I was a bit irritable and that made me realise more than ever how if I'm not okay, then Noel's not okay and our life isn't um, very good. So it just taught me that it, at all the, all the time I really need to make sure that I'm physically and emotionally um, strong and positive and so I have to do what I, I can. I go to the gym, I catch up with friends when I can, phone calls to my sisters, um, email to friends through um, Alzheimer's Australia and talk to people, um, friends from the Alzheimer's group. That's a real strength. The physical and emotional demands of caring for someone with dementia can be high. As the amount of care needed increases, more of your time and energy are needed. It's important that you take care of yourself or these demands do wear you down. Remember to look after yourself, look after your diet, get regular exercise, maintain social contacts and your lifestyle. 
But be realistic about what you can expect of yourself. Recognise that taking a break and taking care of yourself is better not only for you, but it's also better for the person that you're caring for. It's okay to ask for help, but don't wait for a crisis point before seeking it. The person you're caring for may adjust better to changes in their routine and environment. If you introduce the changes earlier and have set times in which you do things together and times when you're not there. The earlier you engage support, be that through education, a care support group, counselling, or having a little time for yourself through respite, the better you'll feel.